And if you ever wondered where former cheetahs, bulls and Zimbabwe fly off, Kennedy Simba is, well, look no further than St. Albans College in the country's capital. Well, I know you've got a bit of history with the director of rugby of uh, St. Albans, Mr. Kennedy Timber. The St. Albans guys have got a pretty good system going there with Kennedy Timber. Not right after that, you, know, you can call me Coach T and uh, if you're going to call me Mr. Something, you're going to have to call me Mr. Hall of Fame. <laughs> you know, with certain people, you meet them for the first time and you think, wow, okay, I like this man, I like what he's about. Oh, that was beautiful. Beautiful try. And that is typical of Kennedy Timber kind of, kind of play. Kennedy Timba, I think, has the ability to bring out the best out of players. He's more than just a man of rugby, he's a man of, of life. And I remember several of the staff in all the rugby were absolutely astonished that Kennedy Timba, this legend of rugby, international rugby, uh, South African rugby was coming to the school. Um, so it all happened fairly quickly and it wasn't really something that we would have planned. He's a big name, he's got a big reputation, uh, but he was so committed and he was so interested and I never had any doubt that he was going to do a good job. Overall my, my uh, highlight was the way that uh, Kennedy treated the boys, how he made rugby players into rugby thinkers. Within the squad, there was instant respect. Never once did Timber ask for respect or, or do anything that made it seem as though he needed respect because it was there instantly. One of the most striking things must have been as well that uh, he never spoke about his achievements. Number one, because we all knew who Kennedy Timber was. And number two was because he's just plain and simple, a very humble superstar. Back to Daniel's oh, suit what of a boot. Calls learn a lot from what? Kennedy Timber. What a kick by Daniel's. And I think as soon as Kennedy took up the position, he gave boys the belief that they could do it, they could compete with anyone, he, they could take anybody on in any festival, as they did. I thought Kennedy brought an incredibly powerful sense of greatness to the whole thing. He, he allowed the boys to express themselves, he would never berate them if they made a mistake, and because of that trust they had in him, and he had in them, they were able to score amazing tries because they were able to offload in the tackle, they were able to maybe take the 50-50 where with more um, autocratic coaches they wouldn't have been able to do that. I'm passionate about rugby and I came back for several of the matches and also watched the team play at several of the festivals and I've seen how his imprint on uh, St Albans rugby has developed over the, the four years. And you could say that each of the past four, four years have been fantastic. Probably his most memorable team, and that would be youngsters that he built up from Form 3, Grade 10, into Grade 11 and Grade 12, would have been the, the team of uh, 2018. That was a very, very good team. They had an excellent set of results, some really big scalps. But from my own point of view, uh, just to see the impact that he had almost immediately on the team of 2016 was amazing. And he just gave them the belief that they could play expansive rugby. I think everybody in the school, all boys came back to the school, parents in the school, even people from other schools would come to watch because the Simba brand of rugby was on display and that was really pushing the ball wide, looking for space and being willing to back oneself, etc. He really gave the boys belief, found it in good skills, uh, good fitness, but also actually he was, um, he was all about character and values at the same time. So his teams have always displayed that. But from my own point of view, which team would I say was the team, the choice team, the 2016 team, the last one I had as headmaster. Speaking of the legacy, we we're all speaking of the legacy. Coach T just got it going in us, it got it going in our blood, you know, the grand blue. Um, and yeah, that was just completely ingrained in us. And we knew that, yeah, that's the, the footprint that we're gonna leave. We wanted to be remembered that 2016 year for for the start of a legacy and it's just something that is just in our blood. How can a small school like ours compete with schools over three times our size? 
compete with schools that are in top 10 in the country. The Hoops was more than just a team. Coach T saw this. He utilized it. He embraced the culture. He was the culture. Whether we were playing against the best team or the worst team, the build up to the game was the same. Analyze, strategize, execute and capitalize. Over his time at St Albans, he was able to produce teams with near perfect winning records and teams with up to 9 provincial selections. He is able to focus on the team's strengths and utilize it in order to adapt to a specific game plan. If he sees that something doesn't work, then he adapts the game plan to make it work. He taught us to play a very strategic kicking game, as well as giving us the confidence to be able to play a running game, spreading the ball wide straight from inside our 22. Coach T might be gone, but he left a mark. He changed the way that rugby players think at St Albans. He changed the way that we play, and he created a love for the game. He created a culture which will be carried on for generations to come. Well, done, well presented. Is that Jared Deck again? Show and go. Seymour gets it out. Wakadima calling for it. Changes direction. There goes Reese, the man again to the flanker. Put Peter away. Now he wants him out. Try time! And he said, if you guys can execute this game plan perfectly, there's no team in this country that can beat you. And I believe that still. Of course, we took a few losses and whatever, but I think um, speaking on what, on what he said to us that day, if we executed everything perfectly, we felt invincible and we felt unstoppable. It got to points where we were running overlaps and we were scoring tries for fun and I mean we really enjoyed our rugby under that playing style and we really felt like uh, we were part of something something great. Oh, oh beautiful. There is that, there's oh, the pace man, there's the gas man, there's the gas man. He has also become a friend of most of the boys on the campus and boys have bought into the way he does things and as a result the, the, the culture and the support for, for boys and for rugby itself has, has made a huge impact on the life of the school. So you know what's the, the, the most special moment that I remember about Kennedy and, and uh, his coaching and, and his teams? Kennedy looked for talent in, in, in different places. He didn't just uh, you know, follow the normal routes. And uh, Luke Texera is one of those boys who, who played in the under 16 B side, was uh, one of our stars in the end here. And Kennedy had a knack for that. He found boys who, who wanted it, who had a drive and worked hard and, and uh, wanted to get better and wanted to work alongside him uh, to be excellent. And uh, he was magnificent in, 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 in that process. And uh, the hoops will always be in your blood as, as much as, as it is in ours. And uh, yeah, thanks for the legendary times. The, the, the interesting thing about great rugby coaches is that they don't just focus on winning. In actual fact, winning is a byproduct or is the, is, is the result of a whole lot of other things being put in place. And that was all about a sense of integrity, that they had to be true to themselves, they had to, they had to think and act and train in a way that they wanted to play. They also had to have respect for themselves, for their teammates, for their school who came out to support, for the people who played on that jersey beforehand, uh, and indeed, respect for the opposition. He trusted boys to play in a way that allowed them to express themselves, and I think that was the most powerful thing that began to happen at the school in that first year, and which has continued all through the, the four years he's been here.
One of the most significant things that he's been involved in, in my opinion, is what we've called the Mushati Cup. And he's, he's instigated and started uh, this particular development rugby tournament. And it's made an incredible difference in the life of so many young boys. But more than that, I think it's, it's allowed Snorbans also to reach out and, and be part of the community and that's made a, a difference in our boys' lives. What's also wonderful is that uh, Kennedy's invited so many mentors back onto the campus. And that went from strength to strength. And it wasn't just about rugby either, it was about developing youngsters to believe in themselves. There was a bit of teaching, there was a bit of learning. It wasn't just about sport, it wasn't about rugby, it wasn't about skills, it was about people. And I think that Kennedy is gonna to continue to do that in his future. He's got the potential to be an international coach. He could be a provincial, a super rugby coach, but he's also, also going to be a person who's got a deep uh, interest in human development. Then I got to the gate and I just saw the sign uh, of uh, St Albans and for me, just that entrance into the school it was uh, exceptional. For me, it was outstanding because it's such a stunning, picturesque type school. And uh, that's, a, that's one of the strong memories I remember, just entering into the school. And it's almost like a, one of those magical grounds that you, you enter into Hollywood. So that was a, a good memory of how I started um, my, my journey at St. Albans. And I was told that, uh, you know, that school is not really a rugby school and I, I never get that when people say it's not a rugby school. Uh, to, in my mind, if they do play rugby, uh, they are a rugby school and generally schools should, shouldn't be focusing just on, on one sport per se. So when I hear a school is a certain sporting school, you know, um, it always is, it's always interesting when I hear that. And I think a, a big element was uh, what we call Mr. Rugby at St. Albans, uh, Dave Mukari. He had to grill me, he had to really test whether I was worth uh, joining this uh, infrastructure and for me uh, that became quite a key part because I got so much information about the tradition and you know I almost I sat down with him and just asked him about what rugby was like at St Albans you know back in those years because I really wanted to incorporate that the, the values and, and the real essence of that because if you if you're going to try begin a culture um, especially with the young students. Uh, it's important that you've, you get a little bit of history and, and, and try to use that to incorporate that, to get sort of the, the, the philosophies that you want to uh, give out um, as you take your journey. For me, I'm just going to maybe learn what a real St. Albans boy is about, you know, and um, they're about confidence, they're about belief, and they're about having uh, maybe an underdog tag wrapped around them, but wanting to really show what they're about. And they've, they've got such a true grit, as you would say. And for me, those are elements that, even if you've got that, you can work around that. The, the technical aspect of, of rugby can be worked on, but that having real aggression and urgency, that can't be bought. And, and I think the St. Albans boy has got that in abundance. And for me, that made it easier to work with. From day one when I started, um, it was important that I, I made sure that I set some principles that we, we as a team would agree on. And I think those were so, so important in terms of the style of play that we wanted to play and the mindset of, um, that we wanted to follow. And that was key. And they, they really paid less big time when it came to moments of challenging moments. I believe that rugby must be played by 15 people. Um, and that's why it's so important that you've got a mindset of that everybody must be able to play scrum off and pass from the base. Everyone must be able to, to catch a high ball. These are all fundamentals that are, 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 are important in, in trying to play the modern type of, of game. And that's, that's, that's what I always endorse. And for me, all of that foundation comes on skills. And skills training is you never do enough. And for me, you've got to keep on getting your skill base up, up to scratch and always pushing it so that you get it better. They're going through a journey and it's important as coaches that we don't fixate on winning so much. It's about what can I make this a good experience for the student and that experience can be information, it can be you know, going on a tour, it can be learning more about the game, 
I can be teaching them extra values that, that are outside and becoming a mentor. And for me, those are the, the important elements that, that go um, with being a, a, a coach. said to the coaches over the years that the year that we beat boys high is the year that I will resign as headmaster and, and move on and, and it never happened we were close several times but we just never made it happen and then um, blow me down if uh, I didn't decide in, in April uh, 2016 that I was going to, to resign and, and I think it's the 18th of May it was a Wednesday we went down to boys high and, and we beat them on their field 41-13 and it was a proper win uh, it was so comprehensive that it was it was just unbelievable. One of the finest performances by St Albans first 15 I've ever seen and I've been at the school for a long, long time. Part of that legacy that we, we wanted to set and, uh, and leave behind was we wanted to do something we've never done before and that was beat boys high. We got there and things were just really tense. And I just remember Coach T sat us down, told us, uh, uh, as you could call it a dad joke, <laughs> and we, we kind of just got the, the tension off a bit. And uh, well, we went on to that field. And um, well, shortly after, uh, about one minute in, they scored their first tries. And we find ourselves 8 0 down with about three minutes in. And I remember just so clearly and so vividly looking at a coach T, just ice, icy. Just keep it calm, keep it calm. If, uh, if everyone was there, remember that we came back to win that game 41 13. And, and I particularly remember that school song that we sang afterwards. And well, straight after that, I remember uh, the school just going, and that was just the respect that our school had for you, coach. got here, I looked at this ground that we call Mashati and the, the, the longer I experienced and, and you know playing here, for me this is probably one of the most unique school grounds in the country because there's, a, there's an atmosphere of, of real intimacy. It's, it's almost like if you're a performer you're playing in front of that intimate crowd and that's something that's, something that's been uh, quite magical. And that uh, funny enough I had to become so connected to the Spirit Squad because I realized after two or three games that these guys might be my ticket to make sure that the team performs so well. So every leader of uh, the Spirit Squad, I really got close to and we sat down and had, had strategical meetings and, and that was quite fun uh, just to get their, their, their input and how that energy, source of energy can come through the team and I, I think it's, it's, it's all connected and you know we, we, we started exploring you know and, and venturing into the sword the, the sword that became a symbol of, of, of the hoops and that that was quite um, significant because it really became almost an energy source that comes through the spirit squad in the school and coming through right to the hoops and I think these smaller elements yes they don't they might not make you win games it's it's about being authentic and for me it's something that the team uh, and and the boys decided and you know once you've decided something like that to to then own it I think that's quite important and that's been, it really became significant to me Just uh, memorable moments uh, in 2017. What was what stood out for me was um, we went on tour to Italy, and that was probably the best uh, experience. I've been on a billion tours, but this one was was stood out for me by miles because it was a great venue to tour. But just some of the moments that happened there um, were so funny, and yeah, it was just absolutely uh, a wonderful tour. I 
I've been admiring plenty of students running through this this tunnel, you know, and it's only ideal that I say, tea time, I'm out, and uh, this is what we need to do as the next part of my journey. Shining through, it's true, baby. Let the light shine through. If you believe it's true, baby, won't you let the light shine through for you, 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 Beautiful run here now. That's right. Gonzalez oh. on the end of the course. Gonzalez is going to go all the way under the sticks from the inside. See you made the run. It's not like this oh, time. Not like, oh, that's Texeria. Texeria with a great run. Luke Texeria, the number 13. And on the inside was Gonzalez to finish. <laughs> Saint Stadium's back line. Pulford, what an offload that was. The kick and chase for Muleya. And that is so special from the winger. What a special try. And Muleya scores. Play was slow. Nobody knew what was going on. He had space and he took an option that was workable for him and he executed it to perfection. In the end, beautiful try for somebody who couldn't have been more deserving. Footage of the Moshati. Seymour beats and Turner, the juggernauts. Look at him go, get out of the road. The number eight, what a carry that was. And Seymour delivers to Miller, to Dick. And great pass by Flepu. And here we go for the opening score. It is the fullback, Zikenu, who strikes for St. Albans. What a score. Head of Mac Robert House gets the opening try. 
Look at how they use the big number four as a dummy runner there and sucking in defenders all the time. That means you have a two man overlap in second place ball is just precisely exactly what St. Olds have been trying to do the whole game. Just making sure they capitalize on the fact that they've got men. On the line, chips it over, 22. Full base got to do some work. Oh, good ride. Beautiful work here by Good run. Muleya, Muleya. Great work. Running himself out of trouble and the beautiful work off the no gathering the check pick of top. Getting opportunity to attack down the left hand side. Daniel transferring it wide. Spotting a little open. Oh, beautiful beautiful, beautiful offload. Oh. That's great, Rugby. Oh, oh what a right. him on the outside. What a, what a play, Campbell. Play Absolutely Campbell. brilliant. The good old inside, inside, out, outside. Yeah. Brilliant to see Black Campbell it, going over. He's yeah. in the same chart as the, the Beast. He looked at the replay. Really yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Beautiful work. Just getting in between the two oh. defenders. And then just gas to burn. There's just no replacement for speed.